There's a berry growing wild in 30 U.S. states that scores 16,062 on the official USDA antioxidant scale. Blueberries, 4,669. Cranberries, 9,090. That's 344% more antioxidants than blueberries, three times more protective compounds than cranberries. You can plant this berry once in your backyard and it will produce 15 to 20 pounds of food every year for three decades. No pesticides, no fertilizers, no maintenance. Clinical trials show it can reduce systolic blood pressure by significant margins. Research demonstrates it helps regulate blood sugar naturally. And Poland grows 90% of the world's supply of this North American native plant, then sells it back to us as a premium supplement. This isn't a miracle berry from the Amazon. This grows in your climate zone right now. So why have you never heard of it? If you're over 50 and watching your blood pressure, if you're concerned about blood sugar, if you're spending money on antioxidant supplements, this message is specifically for you. The USDA Agricultural Research Service published official ORAC values for hundreds of foods. ORAC stands for Oxygen Radical Absorbance Capacity. It measures how well a food neutralizes free radicals, those molecules that damage your cells and accelerate aging. Before I share what this berry is, I want you to know where I'm getting this information. I've spent years reviewing published research from institutions like the University of Reading in the UK, studies from Polish research centers where this berry is actually grown commercially, and meta-analyses of controlled clinical trials published in peer-reviewed journals. I'm not selling supplements, I'm not promoting products, but when I found clinical evidence showing blood pressure reductions comparable to some medications and blood sugar regulation through natural enzyme inhibition, I knew this information needed to reach people who could benefit. Now, before we go further, if this type of evidence-based health information is valuable to you, I'd appreciate your help. Hit that like button so this reaches more people who need it. And if you're serious about your health as you age, subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this. Type your country in the comments. I'm curious where you're watching from and it helps me understand who this content serves. Let's get into the science. The berry is called Aronia. Its scientific name is Aronia melanocarpa. You might have heard it called chokeberry, and that name is exactly why you've never bought it. European settlers tasted the raw berry and rejected it. The astringency, that sharp, dry sensation, offended their sugar-adapted palates. They wanted instant sweetness, not medicine that required preparation. So they named it chokeberry. That single word branded this botanical powerhouse as inedible for the next 200 years. The name became a self-fulfilling prophecy, something you cleared from fence lines, not something you cultivated. The Potawatomi and Abenaki nations of North America didn't treat this berry as a snack. They understood it as survival technology. They used it in pemmican, a high-density survival food that allowed entire communities to endure brutal winters without access to fresh game. The preparation was precise. The berries were dried to concentrate and preserve the tannins. Those tannins acted as a natural preservative for meat fats, preventing rancidity for months without refrigeration. You could carry pounds of concentrated nutrition in a leather pouch and survive territories where nothing else grew. This wasn't guesswork. This was precision food science passed through generations and tested against the brutality of continental winters. Then European settlers arrived, tasted the raw berry once, and dismissed it completely. The knowledge died in North America, but it didn't disappear. In the early 20th century, Russian botanists began studying this American native. By the 1970s, Eastern European scientists needed cold, hardy, nutrient-dense crops that could survive harsh climates and potentially radiation-contaminated soils. They needed vitamin C. They needed flavonoids. They needed plants that could endure without chemical support. They found everything in this forgotten American berry. Poland began industrial cultivation. 
Today, Poland produces 80 to 90 percent of the global supply of aronia berries, a plant native to eastern North America, growing wild from Ontario to Georgia. Think about that. A North American native plant eradicated by American agriculture, mass cultivated by Poland, and sold back to Americans as an imported health product. We're buying our own botanical heritage at premium prices because we erased the knowledge of its value. But here's where the science gets compelling. The Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry published a comprehensive study in 2014 testing the polyphenolic content of dozens of fruits, Aronia ranked highest, not by a small margin, but categorically highest in anthocyanins and proanthocyanins. These aren't generic antioxidants. These specific compounds target vascular inflammation, the root cause of most chronic disease in people over 50. Think about the French paradox. French populations consuming red wine have lower rates of heart disease despite high-fat diets. The protective mechanism is attributed to polyphenols in red wine grapes. Aronia contains approximately four times more of those same protective compounds than the finest red wine grapes. But wine gets billion-dollar marketing. Aronia gets called a weed. A 2020 meta-analysis published in the Journal of Dietary Supplements reviewed controlled clinical trials on aronia supplementation. The analysis included multiple studies with participants consuming aronia berry extracts for six to eight weeks. The findings? Daily supplementation significantly reduces systolic blood pressure and total cholesterol. The effects were most significant in adults over 50. A separate, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial published in Clinical Nutrition in 2022 examined 102 pre-hypertensive participants. The Aronia group showed significant improvement in arterial function, specifically augmentation index and pulse wave velocity. The mechanism is clear. The polyphenols improve endothelial function. That's the health of your blood vessel linings. Healthier vessel linings mean better blood flow. Better blood flow means lower pressure. This isn't speculation. This is documented, replicated science from clinical trials with human participants. But blood pressure is only part of the story. Research published in Nutrition Research in 2016 demonstrated that aronia juice inhibits two critical enzymes, dipeptidyl peptidase 4 and alpha-glucosidase. Alpha-glucosidase is the enzyme your body uses to break down carbohydrates into simple sugars. When you inhibit that enzyme, you slow sugar absorption. When you slow sugar absorption, you prevent the insulin spikes that drive metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. A study in the Journal of Functional Foods from 2017 tested aronia juice on healthy Japanese adults using an oral meal tolerance test. The results showed reduced postprandial blood glucose levels, meaning lower blood sugar spikes after meals. The same study found dose-dependent reductions in alpha-glucosidase activity. Dose-dependent means the more aronia consumed, the greater the enzyme inhibition, up to a certain threshold. Think about what this means. A berry that naturally supports healthy blood pressure and helps regulate blood sugar absorption. Those are two of the most profitable pharmaceutical categories in existence. Hypertension medications generate tens of billions annually. Diabetes drugs generate even more. A berry that offers similar metabolic support for the cost of planting a bush in your backyard represents a direct economic threat to that business model. Aronia is hardy to USDA Zone 3. That means it survives temperatures down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit without protection. Once established, it's drought tolerant. The root system goes deep. It finds water where shallow rooted crops fail. Pest resistance is built into the plant. The high tannin content that creates the astringency also makes it unappealing to insects. Deer avoid it. Common garden pests ignore it. 
Compare that to blueberries. Blueberries require acidic soil, constant moisture monitoring, careful pH management, and protection from numerous pests. Commercial blueberry operations depend on chemical inputs, pesticides, fungicides, fertilizers. Aronia requires none of that. A single bush produces 15 to 20 pounds annually for 30 years with minimal intervention beyond initial planting. From an agricultural perspective, this should be celebrated. From an agrochemical industry perspective, it's a problem. You can't sell inputs for a crop that needs no inputs. You can't create dependency when the plant thrives independently. The business model of modern agriculture requires crops that demand constant purchases. Aronia requires a one-time plant purchase. Then it feeds you for three decades. That's not a product, that's a solution. But knowledge doesn't die forever. In the last decade, Midwest farmers in Iowa, Missouri, Wisconsin, and Nebraska have begun planting thousands of acres of aronia. They're breaking the monopoly of corn and soy. Small-scale farms are establishing you-pick operations. Nurseries are selling plants. Health food companies are processing aronia into juice concentrates, powders, and supplements. The knowledge is returning to its native soil. A Wisconsin aronia grower named Kim Bearham told a local environmental organization, it's cheaper to buy from Poland than domestically because of subsidies, but this represents an environmental and economic opportunity to champion our native species. The Midwest Aronia Association was formed to connect growers, share processing knowledge, and build awareness of this crop that requires no pesticides, builds soil health, and provides critical pollinator habitat during its early flowering period. The infrastructure exists, the knowledge is documented, the clinical evidence is published. You can plant aronia in your backyard today. A three-year-old bush typically costs between $30 and $50 and will produce fruit this year and for the next three decades. Plant it as deep as it came in the pot, about four feet apart if planting multiple bushes. Mulch to prevent weeds. Keep it adequately watered the first year. That's the maintenance. The fruit ripens in late August to early September. It turns blue-black about two weeks before it's ready. Taste it to determine harvest time. The berries get juicier as they ripen, though the astringency remains. Here's what you need to know about using it. The astringency is the medicine. Those tannins, the compounds responsible for that dry sensation, are the same polyphenols delivering the health benefits. Freeze the berries and add them to smoothies. Blend them with banana or mango to balance the tartness. Mix dried berries into oatmeal or yogurt. Make juice and dilute it with apple juice if needed. Your taste buds will adapt. Within a few weeks of regular consumption, the astringency becomes less pronounced. When buying products, avoid anything labeled chokeberry. That's the old dismissive name. Look for aronia or aronia melanocarpa. For juice concentrates, choose 100% aronia with no added sugars. For supplements, look for standardized extracts from reputable manufacturers. I'm not telling you aronia cures disease. I'm not saying it replaces your doctor or your medications. What I'm saying is this. Clinical trials with human participants have demonstrated measurable effects on blood pressure and blood sugar regulation. Those studies exist. The data is published. You deserve to know it exists. The USDA officially recorded Aronia's ORAC value at 16,062, the highest of any temperate climate fruit they tested. That's not marketing. That's government data from peer-reviewed testing. Eastern European scientists didn't invest decades cultivating this plant because of a trend. They recognized genuine nutritional value backed by measurable bioactive compounds. Your body performs thousands of chemical reactions every day. Some of those reactions require specific compounds, polyphenols, flavonoids, anthocyanins, that you can only get from fruit. 
Modern agriculture has spent 70 years breeding for sugar content. Higher sugar means sweeter fruit. Sweeter fruit sells better. So they bred the medicine out and replaced it with fructose. Aronia refuses that compromise. The medicine remains intact because the plant was never industrialized for mass appeal. The Potawatomi knew this berry's value 500 years ago. Polish scientists rediscovered it 50 years ago. American farmers are reclaiming it now. It's still growing wild across 30 states, still producing 16,062 ORAC units per 100 grams, still the highest antioxidant fruit officially recorded by the USDA in their comprehensive database. They didn't ban it, they just convinced you it didn't matter. But now you know. If this information changed how you think about food as medicine, type Aronia in the comments. I read every single one, and I want to know this reached someone who needed it. Share this video with someone over 50 who watches their blood pressure or blood sugar. Every share breaks the silence that kept this berry hidden for 200 years. Subscribe if you want more evidence-based health information that the food industry doesn't promote. The algorithm doesn't care about your health, but you do. I'll see you in the next video.